In this lecture, we will talk about law of cosine. Uh, you know, in a right triangle, uh, in a triangle, if here is the vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, then the corresponding sides will be marked as A, which is the opposite side of this vertex. Little case B, which is the opposite side of this vertex B, and the little case C is the opposite side of this vertex capital C. The angle sometimes we use A, capital A, sometimes we use alpha. The angle sometimes we use B, or sometimes we use beta. This angle, sometimes we say angle C or angle gamma. Law of cosine says that if you know A and you know B and you know gamma or angle C, uh, that means if you know the angle E and the two sides two sides and the angle in between those two sides you see if you know A you know B and you know this angle gamma then you can find out the length C okay that's what he says okay now let's see how to prove that uh, in order to prove it, we want to put the vertex C on the origin and the vertex A uh, on the x axis. Okay. And then, you know, then C is on the origin, that would be 0, 0. How long, uh, what is the vertex A? I mean, the coordinates. You know, this side is the opposite side of B, those two angles. Uh, I'm talking about these two angles concurrently. Because vertex B is here, then this side will be denoted by little case B. Okay? And then the vertex A will have the coordinate B0, because B is the X coordinate. 0 is y coordinate, uh, since this point is on the x-axis, so y coordinate is 0. The thing is that how are we going to express the coordinates b, vertex b, uh, coordinates uh, x, y of vertex b. You know, in this triangle it might be easier in this triangle, x is uh, uh, angle C is an uh, acute angle, less than 90 degrees. So then if you look at this triangle, right triangle, you then have x, this is this x, uh, this is x of this point, B. So x over A is cosine C, this angle C. And then if both sides times A, you may cancel this A. So you then have what? You then have a X equals A cosine C. So that's why we have A cosine C. Similarly, in this right triangle, again, this is the Y coordinate for B and Y over A hypotenuse. That's the opposite side over hypotenuse. So you have a sine C. Okay. And again then if both sides multiplied by A, you may cancel this A. So you then have a Y E cross A sine C. 
So that's y equals y times sine c. Okay. So the vertex B has the coordinate A cosine C, A cosine C, and A sine C. How about this case, the second case? The second case, again, we don't need to worry about C and A. The only thing is B. If you look at this triangle, right triangle, huh, then you will have what? You have a um, x, this one, over a uh, is what? Is cosine, cosine, that will be 180 degrees minus c. Okay. And remember here, x is a negative number. Uh, x is a negative number. A is always positive because that's the length. So what we get right here is that uh, x is negative, a is positive. So left hand side is negative. And 180 degrees minus this obtuse angle, we have an acute angle here, which is cosine acute angle is a positive. So what you do is that you have to put a negative in front of it. Okay. And then both sides times A, you know, cancel this A, okay. then you will have an X equals negative a you put this negative and a together uh, and then cosine 180 degrees minus c okay now uh, if you using the cosine one angle minus another you probably want to recall let me record it for you. This part is actually cosine, cosine, and then sine, sine. Okay? And then you have a 180, 180 here, and then C here, C here. Cosine, if it's minus, it will be plus. Ah. Now here, this value is zero. What well, sine 180 is zero. Then it crashes this part. Okay, zero times anything is zero. And here, you know, this is negative one. Okay, cosine 180 degrees is negative one. So you only have a negative cosine c left because this part disappeared. Uh, you have a zero to crash it. Now, negative 1 cosine c times negative a, what you get is a cosine c again. Okay. So then you have a is x is still a cosine c as above. Okay. How about y? Now, look at this triangle again y over a y is positive uh, because it is above x axis y over a sine 180 degrees minus c because this angle again is c so 180 minus c is this angle uh, and then both sides times a You may cancel this A, this A. So what you get will be Y equals A sine 180 minus C. But you know, sine 180 minus the angle is just this angle. Okay. 
So you still have a y equals a sine c as above. Okay, that's the detail. So let me mark this is 1a, then this will be 1b. Ah, I will scan this one and give it to you. Right. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. We just got is we have a vertex. B is a cosine c a sine c. That's what we got here. Uh, a cosine c a sine c for those two triangles. Now. Again, vertex A is B0, uh, B0, B is the length of this side. B, little case B again, corresponds to the capital case B of this vertex. Uh, the same, capital case vertex, length B. And then we want to find out the distance between AB, which is actually C, the little case C. Uh, how to find out the distance between BA, or you may say BA or AB? Actually, we want the distance squared. The distance squared is C squared. C squared equals what? If you know two points, one is B0, another is A cosine C, A sine C, you can use the distance formula. Ah, that's what? There's the first coordinate x minus this x squared plus a times sine c, that's y coordinate, minus y coordinate, and then squared. This is distance formula, okay, between any two points. Now, you FOIL this out. If you FOIL this out, what do you get? This is the foil part. I will leave it to you, okay? Yeah, up to this far, you should be able to foil yourself. Ah, yeah. Okay, foil. And then right down here is a sine c minus zero squared is just a squared sine c squared. All right, now look at these two. They both have a squared. You pull it out, pull a squared out. You then have a sine c squared plus cosine c squared. Okay. And then you write b squared down minus uh, 2ab cosine c. Uh, here there is no one down here. Uh, there's no square right here. It's just one. Uh, just one. I will patch it. Okay. Now, sine c squared plus cosine c squared is one. Uh -huh. So one times a squared is just a squared. And b squared is right here, minus 2ab cosine c. Okay? So that's the Pythagorean theorem. Now, this tells us C squared is this side squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B, then cosine angle C. Uh, cosine angle C. So if you know two sides and the angle in between those two sides, then the third side can be determined by the law of cosine. Okay. Now there is a special case is that how about if cosine C, C angle C is 90 degrees. If C is 90 degrees right here, then cosine 90 degrees is what? If you remember that, cosine 90 degrees is zero. Then this part disappears. Then what you have is what? C squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if this point is on the y-axis, or this point is on the y-axis, 
you basically have a, will be a right triangle. And C is the hypotenuse. So that's the thing we already know before. Okay. Okay, that's the proof. Uh, next time, I'll give you uh, some examples, applications, by using this formula. So, I'll see you next time.